so excited for this podcast because you are about to learn how to thrive during chaos. And I don't know about you, but I feel like my whole life is chaos. And that is just like, this is where I'm at. And, and I, I am going to learn how to deal with it because I have, I don't think that's your actual term, but I'm going to tell everybody that that's your term. Corinne Hancock is a chaos expert. Can I say chaos expert? I don't know if I'm a chaos expert, but I like to call myself a chaos coach. I think that's I'm better learning as well. That's absolutely better. So I got to tell you, I don't know if you know how I found you. So this is a unique way for me to do a podcast because a lot of the time, I have known the person or it's someone I've met and someone I have seen speak and I, I haven't done any of that, but you found my boyfriend, Sean, saw you speak at a Vistage group and for a long time ago and for months, he's been telling me, it could have been a year. He's like, I really think you should look up Corinne on LinkedIn. I really think that she's your people and you would really like her and you need to talk to her. So, so that I've heard about the way that you speak to teach businesses how to handle chaos. And I feel like you would be great for, I call my audience, my brave babes, because we are women choosing to live a strong and courageous life, no matter what plot twist goes down. So can you help us? I think what is the number one way that you have figured out how to be obsessed with chaos and actually like it? Like oh what is gosh, happening? Amanda, I love that story. I mean, I actually <laughs> was super curious because when you reached out to me on LinkedIn, I'm like, Get your brave on. Are you kidding me? That is the coolest title, the coolest stuff I've ever heard. I want to know this woman. And oh, thank I just you. love that connection. So that's so cool. I, I'm so glad. I, and I just felt the same way. So it is really fun. And you know, I'm excited to be in this now group of brave babes. Yes. Because, you know, like you, I'm also a mother of two teenage boys and you know, trying to juggle it all. And I do spend most of my time navigating and working with CEOs and companies on helping them become chaos ready, thriving in chaos. And, and, you know, but the background is, you know, a, more of a career in global health and working in international aid and development. So, wow. so I am a leadership coach by trade, but I spent that time um, and that, that path using it mostly overseas. So doing a lot of programs and um, I worked for a very large nonprofit called Project Cure as their clinics director. And I led medical and training teams all over the world for many years. And you just truly can't make up the things that go wrong. I mean, it just, no matter oh. how much you prepare, no matter what you're doing, you're leading teams. Some people have never even been overseas. You're in the most chaotic environments. And truly it just, uh, it just kept transforming into this career of, of getting through really chaotic, challenging times and, and finding that I could lead teams to still be successful and stay focused on the mission and accomplish it. And sometimes, you know, looking back, I, I don't quite know how it happened, but it's been really fun now to break it down and create a real system and a way of thinking about it and a relationship with chaos, that it's never a negative. There's actually always opportunity within it. I love it that you said that. I, I don't think I would uh, choose a relationship with chaos, but it does seem to choose us sometimes, you know, and, and I was doing some, a lot of research about you, but I don't know a lot about your personal life. I, are you a single mom? I'm a single parent. Yeah. I mean, have you I have, traveled that world did, as well? Yes, okay. I did. And I, but I have a, I have a significant other. Okay. Now. So you're kind of like me. Yes. yes. Okay. So super supportive, but yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. That world. <laughs> so you understand. Okay. That's, I thought so. So when you talk about having a relationship with chaos, that's the way I feel about bravery. It could be similar because it, it's not, we all know it's not the absence of fear. It's having crazy plot twists happen to you and then figuring out a way to be brave and moving forward. And when I first became a single mom, my kids were very young and I, I was not thriving in chaos. I was an absolute wreck and disaster and trapped in fear. And that's where this came from. And get your brave on is not because I feel like Wonder Woman. Okay. I don't have a cape. I don't have boots, but well, I have boots, just not hers. Yeah, so, but I just understood that one day it hit me that I had to figure out a way to push through fear and choose bravery 
kind of like it was the outfit that I put on for the day of like get your brave on. So what are some of the things, how can we pick what you teach CEOs? We're the CEOs of our lives. Yeah. Okay. Think, well, about think, what can we do when the plot twist happens? And we're like, I did not see this coming in the first, instead of freaking out, what are <laughs> some steps that we can take? Well, the first thing, Amanda, is, you know, amazing to you and amazing to all the women out there who are getting their brave on every day because it looks different for everyone. And I think we have to be really, you know, mindful of that and not compare what may be brave to someone else that may be brave to others. Because, you know, most people look at my life, they look at my career and they're always saying like, how do you do this? How have you like gone and, and how, why have you spent most of your career overseas working in these war zones and, you know, creating this and, you know, it's different for all of us. And people would always say, well, how did you do that? And I would say, well, I think I'm someone that always says yes to the things that most people say no to. And I will be totally vulnerable and honest with you. I can tell you that in my younger years, I think it was more from ego, right? It was a little bit more of a way to be like, I can do this. I'm going to do the things that most people won't do. And, you know, I, it doesn't mean I wasn't afraid, but I think you learn to continue to push through it because the most incredible opportunities come right on the other side of fear, right on the other side of pushing through. And so when you really look back at your life, when I look back at mine, everything that I am most proud of, the things that I hold most dear came right on the other side of pushing through one of those most scariest moments or that decision to say yes to something that most people would say no to. And I've always you know, said, then you hear that saying like, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable, but like actually do it. I have a, a practice that I utilize that I try to do something that scares me every day. And, you know, getting your brave on and being brave is, is having that courage, that courage to go one step beyond where you normally stop. And that's different for everyone. And so you can't compare it to me, right? If you did that, you'd be, I mean, that might not be what you need to do. It might be just, hey, maybe try to go out to dinner by yourself or do <laughs> something that is maybe something that feels a little bit uncomfortable to you. And I think, you know, the first thing I always say to people in talking about thriving in chaos is that first you have to understand your relationship with it. How does it actually make you feel? because it's different for all of us. Chaos for me, actually, you know, chaos is actually sort of confusion and disorder. And not every personality type likes that feeling. I do, I actually really do. I feel the most comfortable in it, but it doesn't mean that everyone does and that's okay. And so it's one accepting what your relationship is and accepting what is your next step and saying, how can I push myself? What is it for me? And not comparing. I like that a lot. I I say I like to be 1% more brave every single day because if I was to put everything uh, you know, on an Excel spreadsheet of what I needed to do and where I needed to go, it's completely overwhelming. So then I just don't do anything. <laughs> That's not, so just doing one thing a day because I believe that bravery is a habit that we learn to practice. Absolutely. And Corinne, I started being brave with a wagon ride. Okay. When my, when I first became a single mom, my kids were four, two and eight weeks old and it was very sudden. And, and I remember calling my friend, I was like, what do I do? Like what, like, I have no clue. And she goes, just take the kids on a wagon ride around the block. And like, and we survived that wagon ride. You know, and then it was, it's just, you're right. It's just one step at a time. And then I eventually I was living in Washington, DC a year later after that happened, 1% more brave every single day. I had moved to California and started a new career. So it, it ha you just do one thing a day. So you were talking about just saying yes, and how that's a little bit easier for you. What is it that you think within you that gives you the strength when you're facing some chaos, some uncertainty that you can say yes? I think, uh, again, I think it comes from experience of seeing the amazing things that have come out of saying yes. 
and, and recognizing the growth each time, because it's still not that I love to do that. I'll give you an example. I'm traveling this week. I'm, I'm in Western New York and speaking this week and I have class pass and I've been working all day with these CEOs and I look up, you know, what, what workout I could go do last night. <laughs> and this is a dead true story last night. And I look up on my phone and there is a belly dancing class, like literally a block from my, from my home. <laughs> I said, well, you know, I just want to move my body. There was no other option, but I said, you know what? That sounds, that actually sounds kind of fun. I'm just going to go try it. And I walk in, it's in this quirky little weird old build, you know, house. And this, you know, this woman is so <laughs> sexy and she has this little bralette on and this little flowy skirt. And there's just these other two young 20 something year old cute girls. And they're like, hi, I'm like, hey, I'm Corinne from Colorado. I have class pass. And I just thought this sounded fun. And they were all, their faces were like, really? You just signed up and came to this class? They're like, do you have any experience with belly dancing? <laughs> um, like, nope. No, I just thought it sounded fun. And it ended up being like the most fun class. And we're flicking fans and shaking our bodies. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I, I honestly am having so much fun. But it was funny because even the instructor kept almost saying like, don't worry if you feel self-conscious. I'm like, should I be feeling self-conscious? Because You're I'm like, really don't plant that in my head. <laughs> And I'm getting ready to leave. And these two young girls are like, I'm so glad you came. I, I mean, I, we just can't believe you just signed up and just came to this. And I said, I said, you know what? I said, thank you for saying that. And I said, you know, it. I'm, I'm older now. I said, I don't know in my 20s if I would have done this. And I said, just keep you know, trying new things. And I said, and by the time, you know, you get my age, <laughs> you might like be fine just doing that. But I do, I don't know if it's age that necessarily has to do with it. I think the truth is I have had so many life experiences and a lot of really challenging ones, not just in my personal life, of course, but in my career and what I've chosen to do. And I really think the more that you can challenge yourself for what you want out of this life, whether it's whatever you desire. Mine is, I just have an obsession with curiosity. You know, I'm a, I am so curious. I'm, you know, I, I'm a cultural anthropologist. I love human beings. I love society. I love figuring out why people do what they do. So <laughs> mine is purely on curiosity that drives me. And so I think you have to figure out in you what is it that drives you? If you have a deep, deep desire and passion for art or knitting or something, like dive into it. Find a way to make yourself uncomfortable in that to become the best version because you look back in a year a year ago, you can't even recognize yourself. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you see that in your career. I look at some of my oh. presentations or even my my PowerPoints from years ago, and I, I mean, I'm almost embarrassed, but that was the best version of me at that time. Yeah. And so we just keep growing. And so I think, you know, it's it's loving yourself for where you're at and knowing that nothing is forever. Nothing. I love that. Yeah. Nothing is forever. Nothing, nothing good, nothing bad. It's just moments. And we learn from them. We grow from them and they're, they're over. And then we're in this moment. And, mm -hmm. you know, my grandmother, I tell my CEOs this all the time and they crack up, but it's really true. My grandmother had a saying that said, quit borrowing trouble from the future. Ah, yes. <laughs> Like grandma's are the best in the future. I would say probably most of the reasons why people are afraid to move forward is they're worried about things that they're borrowing from the future that haven't even happened yet. Mm -hmm. If you deal with what's right here in front of you right now, then none of it is really that overwhelming. Yeah. Cause they say 99% of the stuff we worry about never happens. So yeah. we're literally limiting our lives based on a fear of something that's likely not going to happen. Yeah. So why would we do that? So you, you went back on, there's this famous quote, you've probably heard it. It's from one of my favorite books. He who has a why to live can bear anyhow. Mm -hmm. um, it's Frederick Nietzsche. It's an old book, Man's Search for Meeting. Yes. You as a why to live can bear anyhow. And I hear you talking about like the reason why you say yes and developing a history that say yes and finding your passion. What would you say to someone that's like, I just don't know what it is. I find that, you know, and friends of mine and people that I work with as well, it's like, well, I don't know what my passion is, but they know that they want to find a passion. 
Um, I know I found my why at my deepest moment when I was alone. My my I call my children my sunshines, and I wanted to give them the life that they deserve, no matter what happened to their parents. So I could bear any how raising them on my own because they were my why. So what would you say to someone that's searching for their passion, that's searching for their reason to say yes, that wants to find it, but just can't? I, I mean, I would say it's totally okay. I, to be dead honest, I don't know if I've even found mine yet. I mean, people, uh -huh. you know, say that all the time to me and, you know, that we, we go deep into your why. And sometimes, you know, to be honest, I, I don't even know if I really fully know what mine is yet either. And so I would say, you know, what I tell my kids right now and what I've spent most of my life doing is figuring out what I know is not my why, <laughs> right? There like you go. Almost, almost <laughs> figuring out the things that you don't want to do. And that's a hard pass. Know, yeah. I think, <laughs> I, think are, I think that's just as valuable, right? You and it's okay to to try something on and say, you know, is this is this filling me up? Is this, is this what it is? And I believe that we have many different whys within our lifetime. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, it shifts and changes. My why 10 years ago is very different than what's driving me right now. And I think that, that that's okay. And I, I think that for people that are, are worried about that is like, good. I mean, just keep, keep exploring. There's nothing wrong with it. It's putting a judgment on it, saying that there's something wrong or, you know, well, you haven't found it. Well, maybe you have, you're just, you've kind of outgrown that one. And now you're working on something else. You know, I look at my mom who became the most incredible artist in the unbelievable artist at like 65 years old. And you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's not even the same woman that was my mom growing up. And so that's really inspiring and finding different things in your life based on experiences that you try, you have no idea what's coming. So keep going for it, keep trying new things and see what, see what speaks to you, see what kind of lights you on fire. I love that. Just keep going. So how does someone plan for chaos? Can we plan for chaos? No. Like when we're in those moments, because sometimes I'm like, wow, where she really would have planned on this plot twist. No. Like we know that things are going to come. They're going to change. Our whys are going to change. Our lives can completely change in an instant. How can we be better prepared? Well, one, let's, Amanda, let's differentiate something for a moment, because I think sometimes people get confused of a crisis versus a chaos, right? Crisis okay. is those unexpected events, but they come in all shapes and sizes and unexpected events can have a positive outcome or a negative outcome, right? Yeah. I mean, there, there's ones that are just an unexpected, you know, something good that happens that makes you feel happy or proud or, or excited. But then there's the ones that kind of knock you down just and most of those things are something that are outside of your control these events that happen are outside of your control you know the pandemic or whatever you want yeah. to put in place you know so uh, and it, um, someone thing in your family uh, it, you know an illness something like that those are things that are outside of your control but it's our reaction to the event that creates whether you're going to thrive and get through this or go into chaos. So I really believe that chaos happens when you stay in the reaction of the event. And I believe that there's really only three reactions. And for those who have seen me speak, I talk a lot about the ABCs, that the moment that that unexpected event happens, there's really only three reactions, like people who either avoid it, like, whoa, I don't wanna deal with this, or they blame someone else or themselves, or they complain about it. So it's the ABCs, avoiding, blaming, or complaining. And we all do it, mm -hmm. all of us. It is a natural human reaction to react to an unexpected event. But how you then move through it, if you stay in the avoiding, blaming, and complaining, you will go into chaos or create chaos. Yeah. But if you move into a response, so you accept the suck, right? I always talk about embracing the suck. Mm -hmm. That moment sucks. That's okay. Like, don't pretend like it doesn't. Usually it really, really sucks. Feel it for a minute and then choose a different response. Not avoiding it, not blaming it yourself or others, not complaining about it. Now moving into a response, 
assessing the situation, creating a new plan, executing on it. That's more the place you want to get into of learning that this is what my brain is doing. I'm upset right now. Yep. For sure. And if yeah. you I would think that was weird, right? Like, yeah. I would hope that you're upset in that moment, but it's moving, it's learning and experts. And for me, I feel like the faster you can move into a response and out of the reaction, that's how you thrive in chaos. That's how you, how you learn to accept everything in your life. And you can imagine from my perspective, I spent my entire career as an international aid and development worker, working in the most chaotic environments in the world with people and communities and places that you just can't even imagine. Oh. Or it's just a plane ride away where mm-hmm. you can't even deliver a baby safely and have any sort of neonatal care. Yeah. So yeah. for me, there is nothing in this life for me that I believe that I cannot overcome in the conditions I'm in. Does it suck? Is it hard? Do I get upset? Do I feel frustrated sometimes? Absolutely. But my goodness, This was the life I was just born into with the parents that I had, with the genes that I was born with, and I have to make the most out of this life. And that's what everyone is here to do. We're here to live and and use our, whatever you were born with to the greatest ability that you can, because we didn't, I didn't do anything to, to be born this way. (laughs) I just, I just like, Like, I'm me, here I am. And here's the, here's the life and the cards I was dealt. Mm -hmm. And so I've always kind of felt a responsibility of, well, what are you going to do with that? I'm not going to waste it. Cause there's the temptation that we all have to just like, I want my life to be super comfortable. And sometimes, you know, I have been I have served God on the radio for my career. I have traveled and served and helped fundraise for um, women and children in extreme poverty. And I've walked there in their villages and I'm like, well, and this is not fair, God. And then sometimes I'm like, well, God, like, can I just have like a cozy, safe life and comfortable life? How do we fight that urge sometimes to wish we had it more comfortable than we actually do? I think it's. I think it's brilliant because I, I have CEOs think about this a lot of we never, it's never enough. It's never enough. And so you get there to whatever comfortable is in your mind right now. Mm -hmm. And now you're striving for the next it's our, our greatest strengths are also our weaknesses sometimes. And so that drive and that desire to keep pushing for that is, is amazing. But I think we have to really set sort of how do you know when you're comfortable what even is that like is it something specific is it a specific number in your bank account is it a specific weight on the scale is it a specific you know school your kids are at I mean I I just feel like sometimes people say those things but they don't really actually put a measure to it and it's sort of like well how do you even know you're there because I would yeah. say probably everyone already is like we're living a most incredible, amazing lives ever. <laughs> and so do you want more? Do you desire more? Or is it more things? But I don't care what it is, but just be more specific in your desires for what it is and set actual measurable goals and put it to that. And then you can fight for that. Then you can strive to get there. But to just sort of put this blatant blanket statement out, I mean, my CEOs do it all the time. I ask them, actually, how do you want to feel at work? And they sort of say, well, I want to feel successful or I want to feel accomplished. I want to feel like I made a difference, like I'm impactful Mm -hmm. or, you know, happy. And, And the next question I ask them is, well, how do you know you're there? Ooh. How do you know when you are there? So if I want to feel happy, my happy may be different than your happy. But how do I even know what that is if I haven't sort of said it? And I tell people, you got to pull that into right here, right now. Maybe like, what do I need to do today to feel successful? What do I need to do today to feel happy? Because if you keep it in this huge place, 
you're just going to be constantly living in this sort of like striving and you're reaching it all the time, but you're never giving yourself the credit that you've already been there. You already <laughs> got there, Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and yeah, keep, keep moving the goal out. That's what makes us amazing, but also take some time to celebrate the small wins and set realistic expectations on yourself based on the current circumstances. Yeah. But don't let yourself off the hook either. It's always a fine balance of pressure, but also acceptance of some some reality. I like to call myself like a rational optimist. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I definitely, you know, the believe in being positive, but also being realistic. Some days suck. Like they do. They, even for me, I still like have really, you know, crummy days, but <laughs> we all That's do. And it's just but it's a beautiful life. It really yes. is. And choosing that, you know, I've got two things I want to talk to you about without going too out of order. So, you, you know, how do you know when you are there? Um, I'd love to know how you know, because it's funny when you said that, I think you, you rocked my world at that question, <laughs> like, because I'm constantly striving yeah. And even my but boyfriend, right. Sean, who says, I need yeah. to talk to you. Maybe I, now I know why I said, you got to talk to her. Maybe it wasn't just for the podcast, but he's like, I think, like you had, you should. but I'm always like, okay, how many more downloads? I have this, this goal for downloads from my podcast. And then I reach it and then I make it bigger. Yeah. Or then I'm like, okay, I've got to have this book deal. I got this book deal. And I'm, as I'm finishing the manuscript for the book, I'm already thinking, well, this is going to be my second book. Like what? already like uh, writing that in my mind. I'm like, okay, can I just celebrate no. that I did this, but what is it? But how do you know when you're there? I was like, how am I going to know when I've made it? And, and honestly, I could cry because it is when I get an email or a comment from a, one of my brave babes, one of my listeners that said something I said or did impacted their life in a positive way. That's when I'm like, okay, like that's my mic drop moment. I'm like, is that similar for you? How do you know when you are there with all of your striving and all of your saying yes? So, you know, I have, I've created sort of uh, like a running list in my life of a few, you know, things that are, are some big accomplishments that, that I want to reach that are, mm -hmm. that are sort of, you know, summer project based summer things that, you know, I've sort of kind of set in my heart that within my life, I want to make sure I accomplish, you know, I have a few of those for sure. But I think that we have to remember that our strengths are our weaknesses too, right? It's always a give and take. And so for me, it's just remembering remembering that like I have to do it to myself I'm I'm exactly the same I'll be totally honest um I can't believe I'm even going to tell you this but I <laughs> it's podcasting that's what uh, podcasting is yeah. for so, um and it's <laughs> actually been it's you know one of my biggest you know kind of life goals was was to to receive my doctorate degree and I thought I'm never going to be able to do that and um next week actually I'm being awarded my honorary doctorate degree in business administration and yes. I, I can barely even speak it out loud and and it's I so notice you're like you you're so well spoken and as soon as you talk about this goal that you have and you're you're like it's like this little imposter syndrome or something I is I happening. Like a heartbeat yeah. in my chest, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm sweaty and, you know, because I, one is deep down, I didn't really think I could actually accomplish it. And I know that sounds silly coming from me, but I really, and now I have, but it's funny how it's sort of like, oh, well, it doesn't feel how I thought it would. Oh, yeah. And I think that we have to remember that, that it's, it's never about the accomplishment it's, it's silly. It's, it's about the journey and the experience. And I remember leading teams and, you know, we'd be in these countries and, and they'd be like, okay, well, when do we get there? I'm like, um, I'm just going to tell you, it's not that exciting when we get there. Like, this is it, yeah. like this experience of being on the bus, this experience <laughs> of getting there is the experience. Yeah. And I think we have to remember that for ourselves too, is that, that's what I've been starting to really, you know, say to myself and, and knowing when you're there is like, well, now what if there is no there? 
I think that there might not be a there. I think it's very important to set specific goals. I I mean, that's how I've lived my whole life. I think having measurable goals is Mm -hmm. the way that you accomplish your dreams. You have to, because otherwise you'll let yourself off the hook or you, you know, that, and you set them in measurements that work for you. And yes, it's absolutely incredible. And then you strive to beat it. And it's amazing. But what I'm starting to feel as I get older is it's never quite, about the there. It's been what I have done in my life to get there that is actually the most fulfilling, the most rewarding. And so looking back on the journey, looking back on all those people's lives that you've impacted in in getting there, in all the lives that, you know, that I've gotten to touch and be with and experience, like my life is just so rich. I just, you know, I am in love with the life that I've created by creating these experiences to get there. But I'm starting to realize it's not about the there. And I think that that's kind of fun and cool. And yeah, I want to, I feel like I need to introduce you to a previous podcast guest. Um, She goes by the name of coach Dar. Darlene Santor, and she um, is a mental skills coach for professional athletes. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And one of the things that she said is uh, what you reminded me of um, is we work so hard sometimes on building a resume for our career that we forget to build our life resume, mm-hmm. a resume for our experiences. But you seem to have, I, I think we're similar to you seem to have joined together your career experiences and your life experiences. Do you think, and then Joy's just exudes from you. Do you think yeah. that is part of it? Like not, you're not, you don't just have day job and then life that you yeah, have think, it all combined. Yeah, I think I definitely have figured out for me and it's always been that way is just like I said, you know, I just love experiences. And so I love new experiences. I love, I love sort of the, going after new things. I, I, I guess that bravery or that courage to sort of say yes in, in, in spite of fear, I, I like to scare myself. Not that I, you know, I get misunderstood sometimes that I'm an adrenaline junkie. I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I don't need to jump off, you know, buildings or it's not, bungee that's jumping not for how you. I get yeah. my rush. No, my rush is like, I get it from, having experiences, going and exploring a new city or going and, you know, like today, going to the Niagara Falls by myself and just (laughs) kind of just sort of trying out new things and seeing what I can, what I can go do and, and experience. But I don't I, think you wore the smock and went on the boat because your hair looks perfect. Uh, because that, I, didn't, I didn't go, I didn't go on. The okay. Boat. It's okay. Like, Sorry. To it, it is. This, it, there was like 10 billion people there. So <laughs> But I think, you know, um, I I don't have like a day job or, you know, that and everything has always been intertwined. My kids have always been fully intertwined in my work overseas and everything that I do. And I think I've also just, I don't know if it's, it's lucky because I feel like I work really, really hard. And, and I think that people have to remember that, you know, just because maybe it looks easy on you know, social media, or it looks easy because, you know, of the gifts that I have from my genes and my, you know, like, I mean, but I also work so hard. I think about everything I'm doing all the time. I wake up in the middle of the night with ideas. I, I cry, I get frustrated. I, I strive every single day. And so I think that to remember that it, there is no shortcut in anything, not one thing in life, you know, as a speaker, people would always say, well, how do I become a better speaker? I'm like, well, keep you speaking. just have to keep speaking and it's hard and it's scary. And you know what? You have to be okay sucking at something new. And that's really hard for some people. And, you know, someone like me, I played competitive soccer my entire life. Of course, like I like being good at things. Mm-hmm. I'm competitive by nature. And, but I have to suck at new things. You know, I have to suck at, you just have to suck some effort Mm -hmm. and that's how you get better. And, and that's really speaks to your bravery of saying, okay, well, what are you willing to suck at? And I also think it's um, not being afraid of failure. How do you get through failure and times you're like, well, that did not go right. Or that speaking event didn't go right. Or that decision that I made, 
how do you push through failure? Well, I think that's a great thing to speak to because I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't see anything as a failure. It's all an opportunity. And I mean, sure. But again, in that moment, it sucks and I'm human and I get my feelings hurt when I read bad Mm -hmm. reviews and I see things that, that still, I'm still a human and I'm still like, yeah, I'm going to push through it. And in the whole scheme of things, is it a big deal? Not really, but it still sucks for the moment. So to be honest, I let myself feel it, but not very long. You just can't dwell on anything, you know, even the good things. My mom used to always say, you know, always burn your accolades because they'll weigh you down. Oh. And so I think it's also the same for your failures, right? You learn from them and you move mm-hmm. on, you know, feel the burn of it. It sucks mm-hmm. and you got to feel the ouch and, and yeah. And it sometimes it might take a day or two, but that's okay. okay. But don't stay there you move through it and you learn from it. And don't, I can tell mm-hmm. you, you know, it just, the past few years have put everything in perspective for me, you know, of course, working overseas and being in those environments, like we talked about and seeing the world through that lens just gives me unbelievable gratitude, but working on the police department in the past two years as a victim advocate and showing up in my own community to someone's worst moment of their life, (laughs) something that they were never expecting and just stepping into that moment in their life and helping them move to the next step has been so just life changing for me because it can be any of us at any moment. And no one was ever expecting that moment to happen. And so when we talked about earlier preparing for chaos or preparing for a crisis, there's certain ones you're never gonna be prepared for. Like who wants to be prepared for that? Sure, you can provide yeah. help companies, you know, get them, you know, make sure they have a crisis action plan for, for floods and fires and accidents and active shooters and all of those things. But there's some things like a tragic car accident or, you know, just, uh, just stuff that I've experienced yeah. and seen just, you can't, you can't prepare for that, nor do you really want to live your life in fear that that's what you have to be around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. We don't so, want to expect calamity all the time. No. Well, then what has what happens once you're, you know, you're working in that moment um, with a, what did you call it? A crisis intervention or something like that yeah, with your local victim, police department, victim, victim, yeah. victim advocate. Um, what is it that you do for that person in that moment that they're suffering? Well, I can tell you, Amanda, it's been the most amazing, amazing experience to learn this skill because it's helped me so much, but also I can translate it to my CEOs as well, because if I can help someone on the worst moment of their life, move through that crisis, you know, I can absolutely help CEOs with, you know, employees that are complaining or quitting or, you know, anything like that. But But I think what I've really seen is that in those moments, it's never about the story. It's not about the why this happened. It's about this moment right here and working in these small sort of five minute increments because, you know, maybe it's coming into a family's home where I have to give a death notification that their teenager was just killed in a car accident. And you can imagine as moms, I can't even imagine receiving that news, having someone like me with a police officer at my door, giving that news. And some of you may have experienced things like this. And in that moment, I'm a stranger to this person trying to help them navigate the worst moment of their life. And it's looking at it then in, it doesn't matter why it happened or, or, or whose fault it is, or any of that, all I'm there to do is help you figure out how we just move from one moment to the next. Like you said, it's the wagon moment. It's not about how you're going to survive Christmas next year. This is like, how do we just get right here into this moment? And I think for anyone who's ever struggling, it doesn't have to be this catastrophic, tragic event, even when we're struggling to, for inspiration or getting started on a project or even you know anything, it's coming into this moment and saying, okay, all I gotta do is the next five minutes. That's mm-hmm. it. 
And from there, you can move to the next 10 minutes and the next 15. And I think that that's sort of been just this incredible life experience to slow down. I think someone like you and me and most of your listeners, we live life at this like (laughs) rapid speed and we got to get everything done. And there's more things on on our plate to even accomplish in the day than, you know, I, we can't even, no way it's even possible, but somehow we do, but it's kind of been fun to be like, whoa, (laughs) it also works when you really slow down too. So it's mm-hmm. almost like this idea of like on a race car, you know, you, when they come to that curve, it's like, we got to slow down to go fast. It's so strange. And so for someone like me, who's pretty chaotic and a speed demon of my life, I'm suddenly saying, whoa, can I slow down to go fast? I don't know. Oh. It's a little scary. <laughs> That's a moment of trust right there. Uh yeah, <laughs> it's all the time I, you know, I, I think, look at like my to-do list for the day and that I never finish. So I stopped doing that recently. I'm like, I'm just going to put two things and put two <laughs> things. And then if I make mark those two things off, then maybe I'll be nice to myself and I'll, I'll challenge myself with a third or I'll just go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> and I'll enjoy so let's just celebrate those two things. So I'm going to ask you two questions and I think I'd like you to choose which one you want to answer. Okay. Oh, They're kind okay. of the same, but I'd like to know um, either what's the bravest thing you've done lately or what's the bravest thing you've done in your life? Which one do you feel like you would like to answer? Oh my gosh. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Brave baby. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I have the bravest one I've done in, in my life. Because again, I think it depends at what phase in your life you're yeah. at, right? And so yeah. I kind of like looking at, I mean, in that moment, it was the bravest thing I probably did. So maybe if we're looking at it for right now, uh, the bravest thing, well, and actually, okay, I will be totally vulnerable. She's and, got one. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that because I think especially with the, you, with your audience and these brave babes, mm-hmm. I think actually the bravest thing that I've done in my life that I left a very abusive relationship and I left an abusive relationship that, and, and then was honest about it to my world, to my kids, to, you know, and it really also inspired me to work into becoming a victim advocate and helping other women because domestic abuse and domestic violence uh, is not just for women of poverty. And, you know, there's a lot of misconception around it. And, you know, I have a very supportive family. I have means, I have education. I have, you know, I had everything, you know, you would think to leave and, and I didn't leave. And for a while, because there's a lot of other things that go into it. And I think that helping people see that, there's always more to a story. There's always more to something. And it's never about just that one thing. Or, And I think that's probably actually the bravest thing that I did because I left everything. I sort of, I mean, I had a beautiful home. I had security. I had, you know, this kind of great outside reputation of this life that and comfort and but no one knew really the truth of what was really happening and, and the, you know, the emotional and, yeah. and some physical abuse that was actually happening to me. Um, and I think that actually like speaking about it out loud, which I very rarely ever do is, but not because I'm embarrassed. It just, you know, I, know. Sometimes I think the environment that I work in with mostly male CEOs yeah. it doesn't really feed to that. So I love having this opportunity when I speak to women and speak with you to share, you know, it it not only was the bravest thing, but the hardest, I I mean, the hardest because I had to start over. I mean, I, I really had to start over and this was, you know, I have two kids and, and, you know, it wasn't their father. This was, I'd already, I'd already been married. I'd already been divorced. I'd already, you know, felt like I jumbled them around so many times and all the pressure that went with that and had all the security from the outside. But I, I decided to choose me and choose and choose. Yeah. 
choose my kids and for them to, you know, having two boys, I mean, what kind of men were they going to grow up as if that was their modeling and, and how could they respect me and women if I was willing to stand for that? And I stand for women all over the world. And the, yet I was such a fraud because I was living in a life that no one could actually ever imagine that someone like me you know, people are like, but you're so courageous. You go all these, you know, and then like how embarrassing that, that I was almost embarrassed to, to tell the truth. And, yeah. and even to my family, to everyone, because, but you know, it's funny how then kind of everyone already knows, but um, and you're like, where were you? Uh, cr- thank you for being brave to share that story. Cause that's going to make a huge difference, Corinne. And, and my full confession, I've said this a few times, I didn't leave an abusive relationship. God saved me because he left and I'm embarrassed about the fact that I didn't have the guts to do it, but I'm so grateful that he did and that I still was freed. And I like, I, and I'm here, I am, I'm like this, get your brave on book and podcast and all this stuff. And, and doing a national radio show and And this was a long, long time ago. And when I was a brunette, yeah, I don't even recognize that. I remember you saying, yeah, I don't even recognize that woman. And I too, I remember going, how could I not have left? So I understand, but I'm, there's, but I'm so many, many reasons for it. And everyone's story is the same and everyone's story is so different. And, and, you know, I would say almost majority of my calls um, at working as a victim advocate or our domestic yeah. violence um, calls. And I work with them in that, in those moments. And, and, you know, again, it's, it's just, it's tough and it's both ways, right? Men, yeah, and women, it is, men, mm-hmm. you know, and, and everyone else. And there's, you know, I think that it's just, I want people to become more brave to talk about it, to know that, there, there's not a specific look. There's not a specific um, <laughs> neighborhood. Yeah, neighborhood yeah. That happens in, and I think um, it's it's not a specific reason why people don't leave. And so I think um, it's tough, you know. And I think mm-hmm. I'm glad we're talking about. It. I, I can tell I'm not as polished talking about. It's okay, that, well, thank you for doing talk it. about it very often because it's really hard. yeah, it is hard. And and but I'm so actually really proud of myself. And what's really, is I will be really honest, you know, I actually just, I just bought my, my own house, um, actually last year. And, and it was like really exciting because I went from living in this beautiful mansion. I mean, truly this unbelievable house. And I'm now in this little itty bitty house that I love more than anything. You're probably happy. And my kids are happy. My, they don't miss any of that. And I think, wow, it's never about the stuff. It's about what's inside the stuff that really matters. About the journey. And I know, you know, people say, well, only people of privilege can say that, but I'm telling you, honestly, it, it, I've lived both now. And I can really tell you that, um, the house was never worth it. And yeah. And, and the love is, is what's there and the authenticity and being able to be yourself and being able to you know, choose a relationship that is so loving and supportive and, and that they do exist. And they do (laughs) that are out there. I can tell you it don't lose. I mean, I am, was your biggest cynic in the world. And truly I had dedicated my life to of service because I believed I didn't get to have love in this life. I felt like I had screwed up, you know, a million years ago when I first got divorced from my first husband, when my Mm. kids were two and four. And I just thought, well, love isn't for me in this life. So I'm going to commit my life of service and, and giving to the world in a different way and and loving and get receiving love that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, three, three and a half years ago, it like everything that I believed was never true happened uh, with, with love. And it does, uh, it actually does. And, and I think when you are ready, when you choose yourself, when you get your brave on, when you start living for you, Mm -hmm all the things show up that you ever dreamed of. And, and I know that sounds silly. And if I would have heard that years ago, I'd have been like, oh, I don't believe that, but living it and experiencing it yeah. has really proven to me that when you live truly authentically through your heart, authentically mm-hmm. 
with who you are, accepting all your, your, your good, your bad, your, you know, judgments that you have, whatever they may be, they're, they're all, they're all amazing and beautiful and they just show up in different ways. But when you really accept them and just sort of embrace it, everything else does start to show up when you're, yeah. when you're open for it. Corinne, I feel like you just gave us like this infusion of hope, just so beautiful, you know, and I love the definition of hope. It's a, the one that I read in my Bible. It's a confident expectation of good things. We use it as a wishy-washy thing. Say that again. A confident expectation of good things over your life. Oh, it's the Greek definition of the word hope. And we use it sometimes as wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope I get that job or I hope I get that dream relationship. But why we say it, it's like we don't, we're actually implying doubt. But well, I love that you just gave me a different definition because I've actually, that word has always kind of been that word for me. Just like you said, it's always made me wishy -wishy. a little bit. Well, I felt like hope was like waiting or giving you a, a oh. chance to wait. Yeah. I believe that you get to wait. I mean, yes, you can hope, but you got to work hard. <laughs> you have to do the hard stuff. Like, yeah. And so, you know, I think now you're giving me a different, a different perspective on it that I really appreciate because it's that confident that like being confident in yourself, but yes, hope, but it's also with that courage to make that step. Yeah. And so it's, it's taking that it is possible. It really yes. is. But Whatever you want. It it is. It's, it's the it courage. Yeah. Yeah. It's the courage to get out of bed. And instead of in the morning going, I just brace myself for what's going to happen today. Or you get out of bed and you go, man, I'm just confidently expecting. I can't wait to see what good things going to happen today. Right. And that also when things go wrong, which they might, mm -hmm. I totally confidently can handle it. And yes. I, think, I think that it's, it's having also the expectation that there is no perfect there is. And it goes back to just the beginning of our conversation of like that being comfortable or, or kind of that, that comfort of our life. I mean, again, what even is that and how boring really? I mean, I think you would like it for like five minutes or maybe a week. <laughs> But that's why we go on vacation. I mean, yeah. I think the biggest problem right now, and I know with my CEOs and even for myself is mm -hmm. not taking that time. I mean, you just finally took oh. some time to go do focused, focused work to knock this book out. I mean, mm -hmm. good for you. Like congratulations <laughs> to say, boom, I'm yes. going to commit to this. But a lot of us, you know, I think don't do that. And so I think that speaks into this too, is like, take that time, but this isn't that like self-care, like I appreciate right. that and I'm not, you know, nay mm -hmm. it or being a jerk about it, but also, I mean, I guess this comes from my background, but you got to earn it too. <laughs> like, you you got to earn it. And I feel, I mean, you got to earn the cucumber on the eyes moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that we each have a different definition of what that is for yes. ourselves, but you know what it is for you. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, let's, let's kind of, just always go one step beyond where you normally stop and Ooh. you'll be so surprised where you get to. I'm going to write that down. Brave okay. babes go one, step, go one beyond. step beyond where you normally stop. Oh, yes. It's like one more rap for my trainer, but yes, you're right. I it is, love that. It is, right? yes. It's kind of like, okay. You know, and I, I mean, I, I just, I love <laughs> doing that like in writing. I love doing that in, in, in everything. Like, you know, can you do five more minutes? One more. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. I could talk to you forever. And I wish Thanks. you lived in Sacramento, California, so we could have coffee. But if you're ever here, please <laughs> call me, send me an oh, email. Yeah, um, so we can talk more bravery and more chaos. That sounds like a... <laughs> Let's talk. Yeah, this. Well, I will be honest. I you may you may create a little chaos in your life by putting all this bravery on, but yeah, it doesn't have to be bad. It's I think there's always, like I say, I think there's always good within it. It always is, you know, finding the, the finding the things that have 
come from it, finding those learning moments, finding those opportunities that happen, looking at it through a different perspective. You know, you need to acknowledge the, the challenges, acknowledge them. It's not saying like they don't exist, but, yeah. but also really focus then on the good that's come out of it. And sometimes that's, that can be difficult, but I'm telling you, if you really look back on your life, everything you're proud of is right on the other side of fear. Amen. It is. And I, everything I look back, the moments were the most chaos. Sometimes I miss it. Like I miss that woman that had this adrenaline within her to move her three children across the country on her own in a beat up minivan to start life over. You had a minivan? Of course I did. You know, I was... <laughs> I was the most basic person you can imagine. And now I'm not, by the way, I have a completely see, nothing, nothing against minivans. I just didn't really see you as a minivan. No, minivan. now I have a completely impractical sports car and I have three children. So, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. my boyfriend lets me know all the time. This is the most impractical car. I was like, I don't care. You're like, but I used to drive a minivan. So <laughs> I, I think now it balances out, right? Because you were so practical and now you're like impractical. Well, well, maybe we'll do a conversation next time about balance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think, I'm not... I think you're in the extremes here. <laughs> Again, this conversation has come full circle. Probably why my boyfriend says you should talk to her. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm starting to get the um I'm getting the the uh the duality here of you. <laughs> is there uh, one last thing? Is there anything that I didn't ask you that was really on your heart or that you feel led to share? Here's your little moment to put a little bow on it. Anything you wanted to say? If not, that's okay. No, I think it's just, I mean, I just thank you for this opportunity. I oh. always feel so vulnerable and humbled by these times. And I think you know, I appreciate the way that you really are able to dig out kind of our souls and some of the <laughs> things that are meant to be spoken. And I, I would just encourage everyone to just take a deep breath once in a while, you know, tell yourself you're doing the best you can with what you've got today. And mm -hmm. I, I know that that's something I tell myself all the time and quit borrowing trouble from the future. And it's just that saying, you know, I'm wondering actually, do you have one that kind of you find yourself saying to yourself every day? Like, what do you sort of, cause that's, I'm always saying that to me, like, am I borrowing trouble from the future? <laughs> um, um, but what is it for you? Oh, good. You turn the tables. Um, nice. There's a lot. I, you know, every morning I've been saying, Hey God, cause th there's some chaos in my life right now. We always have some form of it. Do. I say, God, I know there's nothing that's going to happen to me today that you and I can't handle together. Mm, I love that. And that I practice, I call it the gospel of with, as I believe strongly that with is an, a word that um, we don't give enough credit for because we were alone for so long during what we've been through, but the power of just showing up and being with people like you do with the the victims that you meet with and, and understanding that, uh, you know, I believe get your brave on is based on um, Joshua one, nine, have I not commanded you declares the Lord to be strong and courageous, but I'll go with you wherever you go. So it's not an option. It's a command, but he promises to go with. So if we want other people to feel like that too, then we are the example of being with people in their moment of crisis. Because that's the best example. That was not a saying. That was a bit of a sermon. Sorry. Oh, but it's absolutely so inspiring and so beautiful. And I know that it, that I think that that just reminds us that, you know, we're never alone. Yeah. Whatever you believe, you're never alone. And and especially, you know, I, I say also to myself, when I think of from, from that deep soul portion, mm -hmm. as I say every day, use me, use me to serve, use me for how you need me to serve today. And yeah. I think that, you know, it's really that we're never alone. And, and mm -hmm. when we show up for ourselves and when we show up for others, everything else is there and mm -hmm. there's really nothing actually to be afraid of and 
with that, we can get our brave on and, and, and continue to push past. And like I said, you'll look back and you won't even recognize the, the person. The brunette that was driving a minivan. Yeah. <laughs> But I think also yes. to remember, I to just also give that brunette, or for me, mm -hmm. um, that that kind of insecure girl a big hug too, and mm -hmm. remember that at each phase we were doing the best we could with what we had, and I think and what we knew, and we've always, if you really believe that and do that with yourself, that you're doing the best you can with what you have and what you know right now, and keep pushing forward, and you know. Learn get your brave on. Get your brave on. Yeah. Let's do it. I give you uh, air high five. Uh, You're awesome. You're so awesome, Amanda. Thank you for what you share in the world and the gifts that oh, you give. And thank you for um, what I you do. I'm so honored to be part of the Brave Babes. Now. Oh, yay. I can send you a hat. I'll send you a Brave Babe hat now. We got her on. And then I'll send you, I'll send you a coin to, to remind you to embrace the Embrace suck the suck. I love it. Yes. chaos. <laughs> That sounds wonderful. Thank Perfect. you. Uh, You're thanks, amazing. Amanda. Thanks, babes.